This is uh, part three of the making of my Sanderson sister house. Uh, today we're going to still work on the walls and the floor and a little bit more on the roof. So this is the front of the house. I went ahead and added this little triangle half at the top and I cut out the doors and the windows. Um, and I did the same to the back part. I added that triangle piece that will create the roof line. And I've still got to do one more little triangle piece on the side, right on this part of the house. So I'll show you how I cut out those little triangles. Okay, so to make a peak, to make a little pointed roof line here, you want to measure how wide this wall is from here to here. And mine is 8 inches long. So you cut your a square to put right on top of this, which would be 8 inches. That's the same as the wall. And then you decide how tall you want it. So I made mine 7 inches tall. And you find the center of that square, which would be on mine, it's 4 inches. So I put a little mark at the 4 inch. And then draw a line from this corner up to that mark and then from this corner up to that mark to get the triangle shape. So I've got it cut out and I'm just going to take my hot glue and glue along the bottom and then just pop it on top. Um, something I've learned to do is take little stick pins and kind of use them like a nail so just to help hold this piece on there, even though it's glued, I like to I push these little stick pins through just to use it kind of as a more stronger support. Now, of course, when we add the uh, roof, it'll also help support it, but that'll just keep keep it from being knocked and, you know, pushed apart. So I just put one on each corner there just to help really hold it together better. So I got all those peaks put on the roof and everything done as far as the top goes so I'm going to work back on the floor for a little bit and you know in one of the other videos we put these little floor joists in and in a real house uh, you could do extra supports by putting pieces in between the floor joist so I went ahead and I cut these little pieces out that can just push down in between these and it'll just give it more support and I, I tried to make sure I knew where my cauldron was going to be because I wanted to add these little battery pack lights so I'm going to leave this slot open so that the battery pack can just be pushed into here and then I went in the floor joist and I cut little uh, grooves so that the cords could lay down inside and then I can attach the uh, floorboards over top of that and that's how I'm going to get the lights to go through the floors to have these little grooves cut out and then this will all be covered up with the floorboards and these little pieces will here, be here to cap off the end so you don't see back and under there and it'll also help keep the light just from shining out this away and force the light to shine up through the floorboards um, and then of course I'm just going to leave this one open so that that's where we can hide the battery pack.
now that the floor is done um, I'm going to do a little bit on the wall I don't know if this is focused or not I don't think it's focused okay we got it so I don't know if you can see the lines on the wall I think it, sh it should show up this is going to be the actual wall that we paint and I want it to look like boards so I just took my scissors and I've you know I, I'm not measuring how far apart each line is because I've noticed in the movie the, the boards are not all the same size so I just take my ruler and I just scar it and that gives you the line and I'm gonna go all the way down doing that and I'll probably go a little deeper than that it's a little harder to do uh, unless I've got it laid flat so I'll, I'll get all these scratched into the wall to make it look like boards and then I can even go in with a little bit more detail with a curvy line and just make it look like wood grain and do a few little knot hole shapes some ovals and just going down the whole wall scratching it and making it look like a wood grain but I want these scratches on the edge of the boards to be deeper to really make it look like you know there's some dimension to it so when I paint it those cracks will really pop and show out and then after I get it uh, scratched all the way down and put, do all my detail I've cut another strip of the foam board and that's going to go right here where the two halves meet like the the top wall with the bottom wall alright so I've got all the little scratches in there hopefully uh, that shows up but uh, I noticed one thing I did wrong this line is the from here down is the lower level and the boards on the walls are supposed to be vertical like I've got them but up here on this second half it should have been horizontal boards so I should have done the de the detail going in a horizontal direction but I, I forgot to do that after I went back and looked at the pictures so again like I said earlier uh, there's going to be things that I probably won't get perfectly right but I don't think anybody's going to notice uh, which way the boards go I mean unless they're like me and they've been studying the house uh, for some reason but of course I'm going to have to do this uh, detail all the way through the entire house all, every wall in the house and I'll have to uh, make sure like over here I did do the boards uh, horizontal and down here they're vertical so I'll have to look at the movie again look at my pictures that I've saved and just figure out what walls are horizontal and which ones are vertical but now that this side's done I'm gonna take that little strip that I cut out and I've done some texture on it I've just you know cr uh, crinkled the edges and put some scars down it and then when I go to do the painting it will put even more detail in it so I don't have to worry about too much detail because a lot of that will come in when I start to paint so I'm just going to glue this piece of trim it's supposed to just look like a beam I guess so uh, we'll glue this piece on and I notice uh, I didn't make it go from one end to the other because I thought if we're doing this to scale you know a beam or a piece of board ain't going to be as long as your house so I made it a more realistic size uh, and then I'll take the second half and put it here to finish it out so that it don't look like one continuous board so there will really be a gap in between the two we're well, not really a gap but just a little a little space there to, to look like two boards have been used Now this wall 
this little room here where my hand is, that's that little extra wall, that little space we built on, um, where there's going to be a fireplace over here. And I've been watching the movie and looking at pictures to try to figure out how that brickwork is done. It's really hard to tell. It's, it's hard to find uh, pictures, and it's even hard to tell in the movie how the uh, fireplace is built. Um, so I'll just have to keep, you know, researching that. Um, but today I'm just going to really work on getting the whole house uh, scratched like I did this wall and this wall and putting up all these little pieces of trim that go around um, and then they're up here in the, where this other room starts there is a beam uh, that will go across up here like this and I used instead of using the foam that I've been using I got this big sheet of foam it comes uh, I think it's about an inch thick and this is, you know, the difference compared to the two foams. Much, much thicker. I thought it would work good for the beams that will go across the, uh, the roof. And uh, so this beam's going to show, I'm going to turn the camera where you can see that room a little bit better. Here's the uh, room and the beam goes up here. I don't know if I'm going to turn it this way or this way. It may actually be a little bigger than it needs to be. I may cut it smaller. But either way, I figured it would be a little weak. So I just went in with my blade and I've cut a little groove in here. And I'm going to take this little wire rod. I'm not really sure what this came from. It's just something I had, and I've got several of these. And I thought I would glue this right down in that groove to make it sturdier so it doesn't snap. So, or you could have probably just pushed it through there, but I just thought that the, cutting that little groove was easier. Alright, so I've got a little bit ahead of myself on this next little piece that I decided to do. Um... I was looking at the door that I cut out and so I pulled up a picture of what the door looks like and I laid it on a piece of cardboard and this cardboard is kind of the thickness of a cereal box it's like a really thin cardboard I'm not sure where I got this uh, this side is sort of a glossy white and then this side's just regular cardboard texture. So the little door that I cut out, I just uh, laid it down on that cardboard and traced around it. And got my shape. And I cut that out. Then I drew the design of the door onto this, which I don't think I did a very good job, but it's close enough. So I drew that out, cut out each of the parts. See, I wanted to keep this uh, little curved detail. So that's this here. And I want this little detail, this little uh, sort of, I guess, a rainbow shape, half circle shape. Um, so we just cut all those little pieces out. And that left us with this. And then I will just glue that to the door. And that will give us a little bit of a raised detail. Um, and I may even do two layers so it's a little bit thicker and sets off uh, from this level here. And it will just give it that three dimensional cut out shape that the door has and then this little piece that came out of the half circle I'm going to keep that and glue that right in the middle of this and so once that's painted that'll give us that little detail that little raised I guess carved out look that we want to have for the door 
and then later I'm not gonna get all the little details done like I'll do the hinges and the uh, the handle and all that later but I did want to go ahead and decorate fix that door up the way I've got it here and so that's the door I'm not ready to hang it up yet but it won't be long till it's time to hang this up um, and then the way I did this we'll do the exact same thing which I've done here I've already got it traced out if you can see that where I've traced it cut all that out and then just flip the door over and we'll have that same parts and you'll just flip it have it on this side and put it on that side and that'll give us that raised detail I'm gonna go ahead and glue this side on and then I'll do the other side once it's cut out but for stuff like this where you're using thin pieces of cardboard you can see how thin that little piece of cardboard is um, for little details I like to use uh, tacky glue because you can smear it around or wipe it away if you don't like where it is I would never do little detail things like this with hot glue because like I said in a, the other video hot glue is such a tacky bulky glue and I would never use hot glue in little details like this and tacky glue uh, does a really good job I mean I use that for everything so it, it's just something that'll uh, flatten out good like with this you can if it smashes out or smushes out from the sides you can just wipe it away and you can wipe hot glue away but hot glue is something you have to really work with and uh, you know have more experience with but that's probably enough and then just stick that down you could lay something heavy on this to make sure it stays flat but see you can even wiggle this around and move it around if you need to adjust it some and with hot glue you can't really do that So there's that and then we'll add this little piece and then as soon as that's dry we'll paint it or we'll just paint it when we paint the rest of the stuff but there's one little door ready to go up of course do all this same thing on this side and it'll be done that glue takes pretty good bond right away I mean it don't take it long to stick where it wants to but you do have a little time to wiggle it around if you need to depending on how much you use so there's one door halfway done now that I've got the walls scratched to look like the boards um, I'll finish that through the rest of the house and in the next video I'll work on the floor uh, probably using popsicle sticks and after that we I'll work on the uh, beams and hopefully get the roof up also in the next video.